Good morning, everybody. Welcome uh, to Lacoste. We are uh, today going to do the Q&A, the long-awaiting Q&A. You've all been waiting for this day. Together with Tom Wintermeyer, we're going to walk around the facility and answer some of your questions. And I just want to personally thank everyone for sending those questions. They're really good questions. We're going to try to get most of them answered today. I want to show you the EC system as we have it set up here. And so we have a, it starts out with a drum filter. The drum filter collects the waste and moves the solids from the water stream that's coming from the shrimp tank. After the drum filter, it goes to the EC unit. The EC unit removes chlorine from the water, from the salt water, combines with the ammonia, forms a chloramine, and then that's taken out a little bit further downstream by a carbon filter. That's the whole setup now. From Jesse out of College Station, Tom, when new water is brought into the production facility to initially fill the tanks or to replenish water from evaporation, is the water first sent through our EC system and filtering process before it goes through the tanks? Well, the short answer is yes. Uh, we are getting city water from for this facility, and so we remove the chlorine first before we use it. But then, before we actually use it for shrimp, we actually treat it with the electrocoagulation. Next question is from our friend Mike Hogan, North Richland Hills. What were some of your observations that first led you to believe that the EC technology would be viable technology for our shrimp? Well, the best way to answer that regarding observations is that after we started using the EC technology, we did, we'd walk into and look at the shrimp tanks and we didn't see any dead shrimp. Whereas the other technology we used in the past, using biofilter and bioflot, we'd always have a survival problem. Okay, so this is the how the PLs come into us. There's a styrofoam box in here, and there are usually two bags uh, in per each styrofoam box and some gel packs to keep them cool. Uh, they, we either pick them up from a hatchery that, that's close by, or they can ship them overnight from another hatchery. But this is how they arrive, and then we take them out of here, acclimate them, uh, for a period of time before we put them into the tank. It's from Jeff from Virginia. The question for Tom. What has Natural Shrimp worked out with the PL contract for 1 million PLs per month from Sea Products Development? And we were two shipments into the contract of 12 when the fire happened. Yeah, so there was a fire and so we stopped the contract with them, but we restarted the contract up now again. And we're working with them on a, a strong genetic growth line and they'll be providing us the PLs uh, on a bi-weekly basis. So I have a question now for Tom. We are now in our water treatment uh, facility and Tom is holding up some PLs. What exactly are PLs and how do we get an accurate count of PLs that are in a tank? Or a count at least, a, a count. All right. So these are PLs I'm showing you here. They, PL stands for post larvae. And these are about a week old after we got them, so you can see how small they are. And then we raise them up to about five and a half inches before harvest. The way we count these, there's a device that we can use that when we first receive the fields from the hatchery, we can put them in this device and using the image processing, it gives us a calculation of the quantity and the weight of all the shrimp. So that's what we're using to, to make sure that we have an accurate count. Done with that question to get to Tom, so I got some more. Explain a little bit more the stages of the shrimp from post larvae all the way up to shrimp that are harvestable. Okay, so when when shrimp lay eggs, the eggs hatch, then they go through several metamorphical changes before they become post larvae. So it's called post larvae because it's after the larvae stage. They normally come in what they call a PL10, which is 10 days after they reach the larvae stage, and that's how the hatchery delivers them to us. Then they keep counting, you have PL10, 11, 12, keep counting, but eventually you just call them shrimp as they get bigger, and they grow them up to the five and a half inches at that point. Next question, again for Tom, he gets all the good questions. This question is from Bobby from Crystal River, Florida. Will we, natural shrimp, have our own broadstock post larva, and if so, which generic type? Okay, so when you buy a PLs from a hatchery, you can get them either disease resistant or high growth. We prefer the high growth because it's more production. And we don't need the disease resistant like you would in the ponds because we're enclosed recircling system. And our EC system takes care of the bacteria load. And so we prefer the high growth strain. Now to get that, the, the hatcheries look at their DNA and 
and mate the appropriate shrimp to have the high growth strain. So we'll be working with our hatchery to get that for us. Okay, let's do a walkthrough of the rooms that we're putting together here. We're staying in a conference room. There'll be a window over here that once uh, we have everything set up, people will be able to come into this conference room without going onto the production floor and be able to look through the window and see the production floor. So we're gonna walk this way now. I'll show you the rest of the rooms. This is the visitor entry door. So this is where any visitors coming in would come through this door. Again, this area is contained. There's no way to get onto the production floor from this area. You can only get into the conference room or in the visitor center area here. And we'll have a little restroom here too in case we need to use that. So let's keep going. The first room here is uh, that the employees will come in. It's called a biosecurity room. And so this is the entry door for them. They'll go through three stages of changing their shoes, washing their hands and so forth, both ways. And they'll come out this door over here finally before they come onto the production floor. The next we'll have a couple restrooms uh, that are, have showers in them so the staff can take showers if they need to. And then once you're on the production floor, you'll be able to clean yourself up here. We also include a break room uh, so that the employees can have a place to go for lunch and, uh, for different you know, microwave, fridge, that sort of thing. We also included several offices in this area so the production manager has his own office and then we'll have a couple spare offices for other people. This here will be the lab area where all the water quality uh, testing will be done. And so it's a bigger area to hold, hold everything that we need for the lab. Again, more offices, but then going down this way, we have a, a boiler room, we have a boiler room, and we have a feed area that we store all the feed in. And all of this will be air conditioned and heated so we control the environment in the rooms. So Settling tanks, what uh, are we going to be doing with these? Okay, so the way the flow will work is water will come out of the grow tanks and the nursery tanks, gravity flow into these tanks. From these settling tanks, they'll be pumped over to the other water treatment plant, be treated over there, and then pumped back to all the tanks. So these are just to capture the water so we can pump it over to the other room. Okay, I want to explain the process of how we grow the shrimp here. So they start out in the nursery tank here. This is a 2,000 gallon white nursery tank. We keep them there for about six weeks. Then we transfer them through the bottom gravity flow into the grow tank. The grow tank will then keep the shrimp in there until harvest. At each time they reach about 23 grams. At, at that point, after they're ready to harvest, we have valves on each of the grow tanks that we open up. Under this catwalk behind here, there's a pipe running underground that goes all the way down to the harvest tank. We simply open a valve, all the shrimp will drain out, go down the tube, we we'll catch them in a net in the harvest tank, and then we'll store them and package them at that point. So I'll show you a little bit more down here. This, this one of the nursery tanks on its side over here. You can see. And, uh, it's uh, 2,000 gallons, like I said before. Uh, see if that would get down there. It would be upright on a stand so we can gravity flow out of it. We have a catwalk here also that will have a, a great decking on it. So that way we can walk down the catwalk and get to all the, all the support systems for each of the things.
those tanks are huge. Can you tell us a little bit more about those tanks and why they're so shiny? No, sir. Well, let's, let's walk over and get a little closer. So these are glass coated steel tanks and the reason they're glass coated it's to protect the steel but it also provides a very smooth finish for keeping it clean. We used fiberglass tanks in the past but they're a little hard to keep clean plus they have a rough surface which, which can have a little abrasion on the product that's in it. Okay, I have another question for you. Finally more questions <laughs> for the chef. <laughs> this is from Tess from Boston. Ask, have you considered having your, our own brand of spices and sauces? That's a great question. And I'm really happy to say, yes, we're going to have a specific blend, spice blend, a natural shrimp, 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 shrimp spice blend, not a fish blend, specifically for shrimp. And I got some sauces, some marinades, all developed. And yes, we will be selling that. Okay, next question is for you, Bella. James from Bath, North Carolina says that you said our shrimp are sushi grade shrimp. I love shrimp but have never eaten one raw. So can ours be eaten raw and do you recommend eating them raw? Well James, if you like sushi, is a good example. In most sushi restaurants you get the sashimi, which is a lot of raw fish and they also offer shrimp. But that shrimp it comes mostly from the Japanese region. Our shrimp, I can tell you, is sushi grade, sweet, buttery, a lot better than the shrimp that you can get at a sushi place. Next question to you, Dallin. Will you be making recipe books or recipes of the week updates? Well, that is a good question because this is one of the things I really can't wait for. The plans are using our YouTube channel, our Natural Shrimp YouTube channel, to video recipes that I've created, created almost about 100 of them, do those recipes, put them on our YouTube channel, and eventually, once we have enough videos, we're gonna create a recipe book, a Natural Shrimp recipe cookbook. The next question again is for Tom, uh, from Peter. Uh, when were the patents issued and how much time is left before the patents run out and are no longer protected? So our existing patent is good for 20 years from the filing date. And we filed it in 2015 with the provisional and then 2016 with the actual. So 20 years later uh, is how long it's good for. We're also, in the meantime, we're working on other patents to extend uh, uh, more coverage for our technology. Next question is from David from Hutto, Texas. Question regarding the test results of the electrical stimulation expanding into commercial agriculture. If the results prove positive, will natural shrimp pursue forward with offering this as an alternative to the agriculture market and will natural shrimp run with this or spin off into a new company? Yeah, so what I'd like to say there is we consider the electrocoagulation patented technology a platform technology. And what I mean by that is it can be used for a lot of different applications. So a lot of different species, a lot of different aquatic species, and both freshwater and, and saltwater eventually. And so because it's a platform technology, when I say that, what I mean, if you think of other companies that have done, say, operating systems for computers, that operating system can be put on a lot of different computers and can serve a lot of different applications. And so we're doing the same thing with our platform technology. It can be applied for filtration for a lot of different, uh, a lot of different species out there besides shrimp. Next question is from Kevin from Willamette Valley in Oregon. The question is for Tom. Growing fast but not at the expense of, uh, of the business strategy is important. What specifically is the favorite business or partnership model Natural Shrimp would prefer to expand with most? Is it acquisition and growth of unprofitable bioflock facilities? Okay, so we will be setting up facilities of our own like we have in the cost here where we own 100% of the ownership. But we also will enter into joint ventures or JVs with other, other groups. But when we do that, we'll own 51% of the rights and they'll own 49%. And then at the end, we'll share profits when we sell the shrimp. But what, by having the 51% ownership, we'll have control of it to make sure it's done right. Next question is from Troy from Kansas City. The question is for Tom. 
In a perfect world, how many shrimp production locations would you expect will be operating by the start of 2025? Yeah, so we're really excited about the future now because we're getting a lot of these uh, agreements in place with different groups. One of them is Ecoponics, and they're projecting that just in California there'll be 10 to 20 facilities there, and nationwide 100 to 200 facilities. Now that's in addition to the other agreements we're putting in place for other facilities. So we're looking really strong toward 2025. Next question is from Vince. We are standing right now in our future conference room. Tom, when do you expect our company to realize revenue from each of the Lacoste operation, f and acquisition, and the Iowa operation, assuming the acquisitions are completed? Yes, yeah, so we plan between this facility and the facility up in Iowa to have between 12 to 15,000 pounds per week of shrimp produced sometime next year. Next question is from Peter out of Houston. Tom, does the company plan on hosting a live in-person shareholders meeting towards the end of next year once operations are full in swing? Uh, yes, once we uplift the NASDAQ, they require us to have an annual shareholder meeting. So we will have one next year. So we're standing in front of the nursery tanks that we have here. It's a 2,000 gallon nursery tank. But I have a question for Dallin now. Question for me, finally. <laughs> this is uh, from Terry from Oahu, Hawaii. He says, can you explain the matching plans for marketing and distribution to handle this rapid production rate? Perhaps there are planned customer contracts we could share that are anticipating delivery upon Texas Project Phase 1 completion, if not by name, by volume. Well, at the moment, we are talking with a couple major distributors, and it looks very promising. There's a lot of shrimp going to be going out, as we mentioned, about 12 to 15,000 pounds. Uh, working on packaging as well, and home delivery. Home delivery is going to be one of the future things that we'll be doing. It's, it's all about home delivery nowadays, so let's start working on delivering some shrimp. Next question is from Todd out of Nevada. The question is for Tom. When do you expect the second Lacoste facility to be up and running? The second Lacoste facility will be built right next to us on the same property because we have 37 acres here. It'll be about the same size as this one and should be completed by the end of next year. All right, second question from Kevin from Willamette Valley in Oregon. Our area is dealing with some of the worst fires on the West Coast and the air quality has been horrid. Even some local chemistry labs have shut down because of the air quality and ash pushing pulled into the labs through filtered ducts. Due to the exhaust pushing air out, Nacherson's flagship facility shows tanks without tops. If there were a shrimp facility in the Pacific Northwest currently, would they have airborne ash in the tanks? Another good question. Uh, we filter all the air coming into the building as it comes into the blowers that distribute air throughout all the tanks. It, it creates a positive pressure within the building which forces air out of the building, so it keeps other air from coming in the building that way. Uh, we may look at covering the tanks, but not for uh, protecting it from the air. It's more if we want to have better heat control in the tanks. Next question is from Jill for Tom. Would you consider raising other species of shrimp, specifically the Argentinian red, Argentinian red shrimp? Is it possible to raise the shrimp species, or is it too much trouble as they are found in the deep seas? That's a good question. We definitely are focused right now on our shrimp production for the species that we're doing. We want to get into production, right? But we are set up here where we can test other species. This, we're in the water treatment plant right now, and we have actually some shrimp in this tank right now that we're using to test out the equipment, not for production. But later on, we can actually put other, other types of spe aquatic species in this tank and test it like we're doing the shrimp right now. Okay, so I want to show you an image we took with a drone. It's an aerial photograph of the, the total square footage here uh, for our facility, showing the water treatment plant and it shows the production building, but it's before the roof was on, so you can see inside. And you get more of a scale of how big this place is. Tom, I got a question for you now that we're here in Lacoste. We're pretty far right now with the construction, but how far are we? What still needs to be done? Okay, yeah, I feel like we're moving really fast. We actually ordered the building in June, so it hasn't been that long. We, we had to put the, the concrete slab in, and the building's going up. We're almost done with the roof. It should be done here by next week. And all the sides are up. And 
the doors are in. So we're building these rooms now. Uh, next month, there's going to be a lot happening. We're going to be having all the 38 tanks delivered next week. Well, 30 of them next week and then eight more in November. And then we have a crew coming in in November to assemble all 38 grow-out tanks. And then we'll also be putting the boiler system in and the blower system in. All that's happening in November. So by the end of November, we're going to have a lot done in this, in this facility. Um, and I'll be able to report back at that time where we're at. Well, I got some more news for everybody. In 2021, once we have our shrimp, we'll be doing the TRA show. And this year, I mean, actually next year, it's going to be in San Antonio. So it'll be a home event for us. Very exciting. Twice the size of the one we did in Houston. Our booth is going to be 10 by 20. It's going to be a corner booth. We're going to have a chef tables. Chefs will be invited to come to the chef table. Two celebrity chefs will be cooking along with me. One on Sunday, one on Monday. So there'll be a lot more coming out regarding this show. And I'm very excited. This is going to be a big one.